the beat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a Molly song. If ever I heard one. Um, a, a song made for a, a lady named Molly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, totally. Friends, it's um, it's a little program we like to call Moo Ma Mo, which stands for Mutants and Masterminds Monday, and it happens every Monday. We get together and we talk about mutants and masterminds. That's why we call it Moo Mamo. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty simple actually. Um, finally, Monday has arrived. It's Corey Alcorn. Sup, Corey? Good to see you. AJ's here. Howdy. Good to see you. Claude says greetings, gang. Craig, good to see you. Jeans here, of course. Good. Idiocy mm -hmm. Inc. is here. Jonesy is here. Um, I say unto you all, hey, RC's here. Good to see you, my friend. Um, I say a good Amumamo unto you all. Uncle Troy, okay, I like that. I think I'll mm -hmm. I think I'll, I'll suffer that. That's good. That's good. Um, hello to you. Moo, ma, mo. Um, <laughs> You know, Claude today, is getting the chant going. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, today we're talking about rivals and nemeses. I've come to learn that I've been spelling it wrong this entire time. So if you see all that promo out there, blame the smarties who didn't catch it <laughs> before I published <laughs> <Hey>. it. <laughs> but you know, you know who's really responsible for all of this? Well, at least for today, anyway. We we don't want to mm -hmm. put them on the hook for the whole the whole like deal. Everything, you know. It's uh, Oranon came up with this topic. Yeah. Gentlemen, good to see mm -hmm. you, Alex Thomas, Steve Kenson. Um, why don't we take this future pop and just sort of put a pin? Pop in. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um. So yeah, rivals and nemeses. Right. And I I've been thinking about this all day i cannot wait to see what we come up with and you know i thought for a minute you know i really had a good time at our last um monday i had you know actually mm -hmm. have a good time at all of our i don't think i've had a mutants and masterminds monday that i did not enjoy yet and we're going into our third year now right so That's bananas that is bananas uh but here's my here's my thing with the with the thinking of rivals and nemeses i've got mm -hmm. a whole chat full of nemeses <laughs> <laughs> they're not your nemesis, Troy. No, they're really not. Twist it. Bop it. Uh, Hold it. You know, so here's what I... Last show, uh, Campy says the current enemy I hear is they're facing is a mime named... Oh, Decru is that Decroy or Decru? Like uh, LaCroix? I think mm -hmm. it's Decro. 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 Deck I don't know. I don't speak French. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. Um, but I do have my French, one of my very best French friends gave me a nickname uh, in French. Mm -hmm. uh, petite merde, which means little flower. Yes, exactly. Is that, yeah? Yeah? Yep. I will not <laughs> abuse you of that, uh, <laughs> okay. of that illusion. Um, but last Monday, we, I will not disabuse you of that illusion. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, last Monday, we created a super fam, or the, at mm -hmm. least the sort of remnant, or the you know sort of the bones, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, AJ, I get that a lot with that nickname. Oh dear, uh, that super fam has been living rent free in my head for the last week. Samesies, <laughs> samesies. Right. Let's see. Uh, I want to say we went all of last episode without a Gravy Squatch reference. Wow, that might be true. But see, we're gonna have to replay the footage. I don't remember. We've yeah. already we've already blown it for this episode. We have yeah. reset the counter. Uh, we are speaking of my nemesis, right? <laughs> that's, true. that's right. That is true. Uh, but I thought, you know, is is the family formed enough to be able to play a little bit with nemeses? If we wanted to. Well, I mean, we were talking about just, the parents. The parents would be their nemesis, right? Nemesis. Yeah, you know, yeah. Nemesis. I'm imagining there's some other trouble going on too, you know. But um, 
But yeah, so I just kind of thought about that. You know, Steve, thank you so much for writing out that up. And I actually put it up on our uh, community tab and on YouTube. And, and yeah, <laughs> zero days without gravy nonsense. <laughs> I like that. Uh, let's see. Corey says we better double up on gravy squash references. All right, there's your two. I like it. Um, extra that's, points for more. That's not, that's not at all how that works. That's, it's not? Oh. Two times zero is still zero, so let's keep it. <laughs> uh, okay. So, gentlemen, before we start, I want to share something. We, we've launched a, a Roll20 product. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, we have. Let me show you what it is. The reign of cats and dogs. Now, now this is classic astonishing adventure. Yeah, it is. It is. This astonishing adventure. Basically, what happens is cats and dogs start raining from the sky. And um you you know, people are running around catching them and stuff, and that's it, right? That is not actually what happens. Oh. Oh, could no. someone uh, help me? What is this? What is this all about? <clears throat> this is about the platypizer. Oh, it's only indirectly about the platypizer. At least until your table gets a hold of it, then it's all about the platypizer. That's true. Then it becomes all about the platypizer. That is very. True. <laughs> is it about a screaming uh, true. poodle? Yes, amongst other things. Oh, it's about right, pets well, getting superpowers. Nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> I love that. These are great. So these are, so pets get superpowers because um, it is spelled brain is like, you know, they're, oh, oh, what is that? Is that a turtle? I believe Ed? it is a, I think it's a kaiju turtle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. nice. Actually, it okay. looks like a tortoise, if I had to guess. Yeah, I think it might be a tortoise rather than a turtle, but. Gotcha. Fair enough. All right. Five ninety nine. you get, uh. I love this. <laughs> Emerald City is truly going to the dogs. Uh, a bizarre break-in and the discovery of a Silver Age hero hideout. And then the city is suddenly under siege as ordinary animals begin developing superpowers and running amok. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amok, amok, amok. amok, amok. And uh, yeah, so you get uh, some, uh, we get entirely new NPC and villain tokens. All opponents ready to go using the official M M sheet, and it's fun. It's kind of lighthearted, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. It's yeah, pure it's, Silver it's... Age wackiness brought to you by Crystal Fraser, as only she can. As only she That's can. True. As only she can. Uh, Five ninety nine over there on uh, on roll twenty. You're going to want to pick it up for yourself, and uh, you know, have some fun. Crystal is the queen of wacky. Absolutely. True. Yeah, absolutely. And now I've got to find where I put y'all. There we go. And the link is in chat. Go pick it up. And, uh, you know, buy one for yourself. Buy one for a friend. Buy one for your family. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Yep. It's like um, it always is. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, Corey Alcorn says, American gravy is the only gravy. Is there any other gravy? I suppose Canadians kind of somebody claim. mentioned sure. English gravy, but I don't English know. gravy. I don't Oof. know what that is, and I'm afraid to ask. I don't. I don't know. Want to know what you'd put it on? Because is that when you I... juice a polite chicken? <laughs> yes, it is a chicken with a monocle and a top hat. Mm. A bok, a bok. That's an English chicken. <laughs> <laughs> There's a you see. in the middle of the bok. <laughs> Hello, uh, Nate Robbins, you are on finally. Good to see you, friend. Uh, RC says, good to be back. Mondays weren't the same. That's true. Very true. And um, discount American gravy, clearly. Let's Ooh. see. Uh, SC Terran Marine says, I try to make arch enemies relevant to that to the hero. For example, my Dark mm -hmm. Avenger was a former burglar who killed a former superhero in a, in self-defense, and the former hero's daughter went insane with grief and became the enforcer for... Wow, okay, I like that. Yeah. I like yeah. that a lot. You know, yeah, so let's talk about it. What are... Let's talk about the basics and then kind of go from there. All right. So when, uh, when I, you're thinking of, you know, picking the perfect villain foil mm -hmm. for your... Is, is, is sort of um, the best part about it. 
right? It like, is. And I think there's two ways to go about it. You can either in the beginning of the campaign sit your players down and say, is there a hero or a villain that you want to have a nemesis relationship with and build from there? Mm -hmm. yep. Or introduce really horrible villains and have them build those relationships organically. Right, right. right. Uh, you right. know, Orinon being being sort of the... Um, uh, the originator of this the emotion. originator yeah says um, okay so when it comes to rivals and nemeses the first thing to discuss would be what sets them apart from any other villain in a in a mm -hmm. rogues gallery and so right. what's the special secret i think it's the in for both characters it's the emotional charge that they have mm -hmm. you know rivals are characters who are you know trying to outdo the hero in some way that they they, they, they and the hero share some kind of goal um, and the rival is going to be the one to get there first or do it better or mm -hmm. in some way show that they are superior um, to, to the hero. Um, a nemesis, on the other hand, um, is somebody who really just wants to defeat or destroy the hero in one way or another. Um, and in both cases, usually... It's somebody, at the very least, the rival and or nemesis feels very strongly about this, and the hero probably does too. Um, and, you know, if they don't right away, they probably will after they've had to deal with their rival or nemesis for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you eventually get that character that the, the, the hero and hopefully the players feel really strongly about. Yeah, I like to think that regular villains will always stay on on task, but a mm -hmm. nemesis is willing to abandon their evil scheme to hurt you as right. the hero. They're willing to you become the sole focus of what they're up to. Like it's an obsession, it's a it's a personal desire to see your enemies fall before you and hear the limitations of the people they care about. <laughs> right. I like that. Uh, you know, Nate says Lord of the Rings, Legolas and uh, Gimli are rivals. Yeah, they're friendly rivals. Friendly rivals, know. yeah. Sure. And that you can have a friendly rivalry, you know, within the, you know, context of a group of char player characters, you know, as far as that goes. But then you can also have very unfriendly rivals like Reed Richards and Dr. Doom. Sure, sure. Okay, what about um, J. Jonah Jameson and Spider-Man? So I think of... I think of characters like Jameson as more what I put, I put them in the sort of the third category of foils, mm -hmm. you know, as far as that goes. I mean, you could think of Jam Jameson as something of a nemesis in that he is trying to ruin Spider-Man's reputation um, so far as that goes. But I tend to think of those characters as more nuisances. They're sort of, you know, foils to create trouble for the heroes. They're, you know, complications, but not really yeah. villains as such. I think it's required to go both ways. I don't think Spider-Man hates Jameson as much as Jameson hates Spider-Man. I mm. think it's important that there's an equal amount of dislike between one another. Yeah. Now, can you have a nemesis that you are like, hey, chill out, friend? Like, I, I'm not trying to sure. get you. Like, they're just yeah. trying, they just want to tear you down. Okay, gotcha, that's gotcha. That's often the case, you know, oftentimes they're, especially if a nemesis is based on a misunderstanding Mm -hmm. Or something like that. A hero might be like, "Look, like I don't know why you hate me so much, but <laughs> clearly you do, and we need to work something out." Hmm. Yeah. Run with actually. Uh, oh, I played sorry. a game where I had a nemesis because I witnessed another stormer just disintegrate a bunch of cops, and my hero was like, "Well, that's not okay. That's the most evil thing I've seen happen since becoming a superhero." Mm -hmm. But eventually, the relationship developed once the villain was in jail that my hero started to understand a little bit more about the situation that pushed him into that. And I started to become my, the, his greatest advocate for rehabilitation mm -hmm. instead of wanting to destroy him. Now, Idiocy Inc. says, so to comprehend completely, Uncle Alex and the Gravy Squatch are each other's nemesis? I don't we know. Don't, I don't know how Gravy Squatch feels about Alex. I think, I think Gravy Squatch loves you. I don't think Gravy Squatch is cognizant of human existence. I think he <laughs> sees know, it beneath, us beneath him. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's well, right. Really, Gravy Squatch wants everything underneath him, and that's kind of the problem. Or wants <laughs> to be over everything. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. That is sort of the. I will be the gravy boat that destroys him. <laughs> but he has to know I exist first. 
Right. Uh, this is interesting. Corey Alcorn says that a nemesis is willing to sacrifice long-term personal gain for the short-term pleasure of hurting their hero. Oftentimes, That's, yeah. yeah. You know, the um, there's another, uh, I'm going to, Ron Mapat said, so Silver Age, Lois Lane, and Lana Lang? Well, romantic rivals. Yeah. Um, for Superman, yeah. certainly. Oh, interesting. Okay. <clears throat> and, you know, you can definitely get into the, you know, the drama of a, you know, romantic triangle or that sort of you know, thing where characters are romantic rivals. Oh, no, someone hurt Alex. Uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> No. Oh no, Pope Brandon Brownson really took it there, didn't he? He really took it there. Uh, you know, friends, um, you'll have to read the live playback of the chat because if I, I, I fear if I say this, if I read it out loud, something yeah. will break, something will shake loose inside of mm -hmm. Alex. <laughs> Brandon, for legal purposes, what I'm thinking is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> I like right. it. Okay, this is interesting. The Shredder started out as a nemesis to TMNT, uh, to the Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles, but then, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and oftentimes uh, a nemesis <laughs> will eventually become an ally, uh, if not from circumstance, then, you know, uh, because their character has developed in some way. I love that. Uh, I love that a lot. Actually, we call that fan thick. If we're going to mm. be, I was totally going to type fan thick, but I just was wasn't sure people would get it. Uh, Ornon says love triangles weak. Make a love hexagon that makes mir mm -hmm. miraculous ladybugs love square look simple. Absolutely, get it oh, a yeah. messy tangle as much as you can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Nate Robbins says uh, uh, Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. And, Look. you know, you can and we've mentioned before, you know, you can play fun, you know, romantic entanglements with characters, secret identities versus their public identities. You know, the you know, I, you know, the, my significant other, my love interest is only interested in my superhero identity, but I want to win them over as myself and my secret identity, but they won't notice me sort of scenario it's really tough how many times peter parker gets in a love triangle with spider-man with spider-man <laughs> right. that's yeah. very true well you know when you think about nemesis the the whole relationship of between nemesis like mutual mm -hmm. nemesis like uh batman joker yep it mm -hmm. is very intimate yeah sure yeah. i mean you know, your your arch enemy is usually someone who knows you very very well or at right. least thinks they do and are trying to get to know you better in every way to try to exploit a weakness. Yeah. And I think it's important when you're forming a, a nemesis relationship that the two characters involved need to be like two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Like in the Batman Joker example, Batman is order. Joker is chaos. Lex Luthor is capitalist power and Clark Kent is farm boy. Good, good old boy. Mm hmm. Yep. I was going to say farm boy socialist, but he hasn't beat up a landlord in a little while. Little while. <laughs> True. <laughs> so there's a couple good um, questions here. Now, I, I, for Idius Inc. said, uh, so for the super family, we, you all, uh, we, I think, yeah, we works, created, w would the parents be together or would a divorce? I don't think we've, we just know that the parents are kind of, decide. yeah, they're kind yeah. of for all intents on the bad, like they're, they're bad, but we don't. We haven't really filled that out yet, right? Mm -hmm. right. And then our our CSA, Oh, go ahead, Alex. I just I like the idea of them being together because that means it's both. There are two family units in opposition with each other. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. You gotcha. Gotcha. Now, um, RCS is an interesting question. Do you often make your own rivals or nemesis, and when starting a campaign, or do uh, your GMs come up with the ideas, or do they just come up organically? I usually include it as a session zero question. I, I mm -hmm. give a list of villains that are going that I know are going. I want to show up in the campaign, and I ask, are, "Do you have any specific attachment to any of these villains, mm -hmm. or do you have a villain you want to substitute that's similar to this villain?" Yeah, yeah, I find it. I, it the answer tends to be all of the above, depending on the campaign. Mm -hmm. 
Some players will have a very clear idea for a nemesis for their characters. Others won't, um, but will you know that will develop organically when they encounter certain villains uh, in the campaign, and they'll be like, "Wow, I like really hate this character," <laughs> like you know. Um, and uh, sometimes it will it will um, be suggest other players will suggest, "Hey, this would be a great you know like enemy for your character sort of scenario." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like to leave the door open so that it can also develop naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I really want to borrow from our age games is the bond mechanic. I think that would be an interesting mm-hmm. way to add a mechanical element to Nemesis or Rivals. Yep. Where the stronger your bond is, you get certain mechanical benefits that reflect in the game. I just don't know how we I don't know how we would do that, but it seemed it's it's an idea that was rooting around in my head this mm-hmm. morning while I was thinking about this topic. Oh, I know ways we do that. <laughs> We should talk. Steve knows. We should talk. I like that a lot. I mean, I definitely do. And I think that there's something interesting to be sort of explored, even just even without the mechanism, but that mm-hmm. they're, you know, how does your character change? How what are the things that happen to your world? How how are you influencing your other relationships, your other, you know, sort of connections mm-hmm. that you've got, whether it's sort of who are you when you aren't your hero? You know, when you've got that alias, um, how how is that life impacted by a, a hardcore nemesis? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed. And I think the uh, nemesis especially are, because Alex mentioned session zero, I think nemesis especially is a really good area to set some boundaries around mm-hmm. in terms of the campaign. Um, is this just a... Silver Age, you know, sort of, you know, shaking your fist at the hero and I am going to, you know, get you in a death trap the next time I get you sort of nemesis or, you know, is this really like, you know, are you going to go like, you know, Kingpin versus Daredevil level of dark, like I am going to systematically destroy your life. um, Sort of nemesis. Or are you going to be major force and Kyle Rayner? (laughs) Right, you know, just how far can you go right, you know, with that, um, you know, it, and it's important that you you set some boundaries with that because it can get really dark really fast if you're not careful and uh, you want everybody to be on the same page in terms of the expectations. A uh, question on the floor right now is um, Idiot Sink says, I have a question. How come Uncle Alex never represents any of the merch like Uncle Steve does? He, Alex, Alex does. He is wearing the mutants and master panties. Well, this is embarrassing because I um, my laundry cycle is just messed up right now. I do. Ha- I have one M&M shirt that I <laughs> and it's always dirty on Monday. Right. You need to get Alex extra M&M shirts. We really, really we really do. We really I usually do. wear it on Wednesday when I'm GMing over at, uh, mm-hmm. over at Untold Stories Project. You know, we really need to, uh, we probably need need more merch. We do. We, we've got some good stuff. Uh, boy, I think we need more heroes and I think we need a moo mammo. I want to use those logos from Sentinels of the Old of Earth prime. Mm. Oh, we should. They're really great. I want a Daedalus shirt so bad. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I wouldn't, you want a Daedalus sucks. (laughs) No, I love Daedalus. It's just, I see. Daedalus, Daedalus is his favorite victim. Okay, gotcha. You, you just punish uh, Daedalus and is always sort of in some sort of uh, state of Look, disrepair. Kidnapping is my love language, okay? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I like Don't that. Don't ask my wife. Nicole is sending you shirts, Alex. Uh, y- no, no, no. You. It wasn't Alex. It was Alexander. <laughs> I'm going to be sending yes. you some dang shirts. That was a mom tone, she, and I she know. She says in her mom voice, yeah. That's right. And it's, yeah. Uh, where can we buy the M M&M and M undies? We're just doing a test market right now. We'll get back to you on that. Yeah, I actually have to iron them all. I have to iron p- the p- uh, patches on to each of the panties. So yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it, it is mutants and master right. panties. So um, RC for the record, Daedalus said not to fly close to the sun. He <laughs> simply said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Frog Taco says, "Oh, mom voice engaged." Mm-hmm. Kidnapping is my love language. <laughs> if somebody sends me Gravy Squatch fan fiction, I will send you a discount code. 
Wow. wow don't that's threaten Alex ex- with a good time. No joke. That's exciting. I like that. We're get we're moving into a whole like kind of a, a you know a, to to coin a phrase an intimate nemesis ship <laughs> between you and Gravy Squatch. I like it. I like mm-hmm. where it's this. Well, is everybody loves enemies to lovers, right? That's yeah. a trope people enjoy. Right. That's true. And I like you know you, if you're going to have an enemy, have a savory one. <laughs> right. You know, everybody you needs savor a that relationship. Path. You know. <laughs> Uh, did you say everyone needs a gravy bath? Yes, but uh, don't write that on the fan <laughs> And No, no, no. Uh, but write a story about <laughs> it. You, you can do so with just evocative uh, sort of uh, descri- descriptions of the of the tender moment. Exactly. I'm thinking of like uh, one of those. What was that movie with Demi Moore and um, uh, she was doing pottery and the ghost was ghost. behind her? Oh, it was a ghost. ghost. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll just call it gravy, I guess. So anyway, not d- just squatch, squatch, squatch. Exactly. I like it. So let's see. The best embassies tend to be linked to the hero's origins or earliest adventures. Yeah, we Oftentimes, talked about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's something that uh, we t- talked a little bit about in the promo, but that, you know, it could be somebody who knows your origin is trying mm-hmm. to, you know, I think about um, Wolverine. Sure. You know, you know. His, his origin with you know both his mutant powers and the Weapon X program. That's right. On all kinds of nemeses, as far as that goes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Sabretooth is a perfect villain who will derail the entire scheme to go try to kill Wolverine. Yep. And you know that that raises an interesting and often not played enough element of the villains' complications. Uh, Mm -hmm. so far as that goes and how the heroes can take advantage of that, um, you know, by using the fact that they know that this nemesis hates one of them or all of them for a team nemesis um, and really, you know, playing on that uh, in order to distract the villain for that vital time when they need a distraction. You know, Nate Robbins brings up Sabretooth. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was thinking too. Uh, Absolutely. The X-Men are such a great place to look for nemeses. There are so many different kinds and there's lots of great examples to pull for your own <laughs> needs. Mm-hmm. Cause like there's Xavier and Magneto, yeah. Magic and Mephisto, Wolverine and Sabretooth. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shadow Cat and the Juggernaut. <laughs> the Juggernaut, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, so actually, so it, Juggernaut is is Cyclops and Monogamy. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wowzers! <laughs> Absolutely, that Cyclops and Wolverine. Yeah, he have rivals. Yeah, great, great break. Yeah, great uh, rivals. Yeah, those are see. rivals on the same team that are not friendly rivals, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, they have so, become so. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So Ornan says, so what are some, what some good advice for maintaining the threat level and such on rival nemesis? What's mm-hmm. the balance of making them hit the balance of not pathetically weak or overwhelmingly strong or. Well, a lot of times the trick with an, I mean, usually a nemesis is going to be somewhere close to the hero's power level, um, not overwhelmingly powerful and not much weaker than them. But one of the key things you can do with a nemesis is to really focus them on being effective against their particular enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, so oftentimes you will, hen- you will end up with the scenario of the nemesis has powers that are the opposite of the heroes that they may be vulnerable to. Or you may end up with a scenario where two characters who are rivals or nemeses are immune to each other's powers um and they have to find some way to to overcome one another other than just blasting each other because their powers don't work on each other or Mm -hmm. uh, you know those kinds of things a nemesis might be somebody who steals the hero's powers Mm -hmm. uh, you know uh and so you know like nate says you know the strength of one of the characters may be the weakness of the other um, and so they they have uh, a particular um, power power level, so to speak, when it regards each other. Um, mm-hmm. 
And that that's a particular thing to keep in mind, I think. Yeah, I definitely think the villain hitting the hero in their blind spot is a great way to maintain balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get that right. a lot with like Superman and Lex Luthor. Superman's way more powerful than Lex Luthor, but right. he can always find some way to undermine Lex. Or even villains and heroes that are evenly matched, like the Green Goblin and Spider-Man. Green Goblin is so much more barbaric than Spider-Man's mm -hmm. ever willing to be that that's sort of where the balance is. Right. right, right. Threatening any innocent, just innocent civilians in general, but also uh, mm -hmm. trying to un, kind of undo his life. And mm -hmm. right, yeah, yeah. Uh, disembodied Troy, <laughs> disembodied Troy's nemesis is embodied Roy. I hate that guy. Mm -hmm. So I actually do have a nemesis, but I won't name him here on the stream. <laughs> I have grown beyond him. <laughs> 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 but look so, way back in the uh, Eminem Facebook channel, and you'll you you might be able to find some hints mm, of our, of our uh, last rivalry. Well, here's a question. Uh, one of the things that someone had mentioned, uh, and I'm I apolog apologies for not remembering who you will you you are. So make sure to take credit once I mention this. Is team sort of yes. rivals and and then also you know nemeses like that the idea of sort of stacking a team mm -hmm. you know individual by individual sort of counter counterbalancing like i think of um what are some great team rivalries or nemeses well like you know magneto uh, is you know both professor x's nemesis but he's also sort of the nemesis of all of the x-men you know mm -hmm. and, you know when they were first starting out as a team um and you know he likewise has his sort of you know Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, who are the opposite number of the X Men, um, but Magneto's a you know a threat all by himself uh, mm -hmm. as far as that goes, and it's the same for a lot of really powerful master villains. Doom, Doctor Doom is Reed Richards' nemesis specifically, but he's a threat against the whole Fantastic Four. Right. Well, what about the? And he does most? have a relationship with each of the Fantastic Four, also, and that's he does, different yeah. than his nemesis relationship with Reed. Yep, that I think true. makes him engaging in a way that is that's good to play with. Mm -hmm. How would you how would you categorize the Sentinels and mutants? Well, the Sentinels are, you know, a, a particular kind of threat. I don't really think of them as a nemesis mm -hmm. because, again, it's that that lack of that relationship. You know, right. um, because the Sentinels are just robots. Uh, right, most right. of the time they don't have much in the way of interaction they're just sort of a they're a threat certainly yeah. you know but it's really not unless you start getting specific characters involved would you they, transfer that nemesis sort of relationship to the government then or the entity controlling well yeah i think whoever yeah. invented the whoever invented the set oliver trask or right i think that is the person who benefits from the nemesis bonuses that we might mm -hmm. come up with um yeah, using the I sentinels as a weapon yeah i mean it's it's not so much the sentinels or project wide awake or the government it's mm -hmm. specific characters like bolivar trask and senator kelly and yeah you know who who are the focus of those things who are more the the nemeses yeah it's gotcha. hard to stat up the cowardly american public I was just going to say how do you <laughs> how do you stat up uh, anti mutant sentiment you know right. that's that's Tough, uh, you could stat that up. That is something that you could work on if that's something that you want to be integral to your storyline. You could come up with like a general bonus or penalty to things based on the sentiment of the public versus your heroes. Very at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting, Alex. So, so here's a question then. So, if you are trying to have a uh, have there be a balance or a measure of sentiment that will tip things one way or the other as it i mean like the the whole anti-mutant sentiment is very interesting because that mm -hmm. as that ramps up you could really cause foment some some big action you know yeah. so the whole the whole community picketing or people getting you know mm -hmm. uh, law legislation getting passed or you know sort of moving mm -hmm. the political will how would you how would you build for that or or account for that in in yeah. a game setting that could have so many different ways of influencing the game setting even if it's just like if anti-mutant sentiment gets to a certain mechanical threshold all mm -hmm. of the sentinels go up a power level or um, right there are there are circumstance penalties to interaction skills for mutant characters or 
just the amount of random encounters that happen in any given area increase or increase mm -hmm. in threat or increase in, in um, number. Yep. Mm, Ron, my Pat says that that might be done as a sort of multi-session skill challenge. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Churn yeah, the churn for m and something, something along those lines, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, and if it goes the other way, it could make it could make it more difficult for certain characters to use their weapons like the Sentinels in public. So there's just it would take a lot of abstractness on the GM's part and a lot of a lot of record keeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I like that because it's something that could be influenced by the heroes and the villains. So right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I don't mean to laugh. Rock Taco says, "Say, where should one look to find a, a Daedalus logo?" Asking for some underpants. Yeah, uh, Ev, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, the Sentinels went rogue and tried to enslave the human race in order to tank out mutants, since mutants are still humans, and thus, by enslaving humanity, they can easily wipe out our mutant kind. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that sort of those those the devil deals what is it the monkey paw kind of mm -hmm. yep. yeah 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 those whole artificial intelligence programs usually don't end up well in that no way. no as we'll soon see for ourselves as we rush headlong into the ai world right yeah. and we're calling it anti-mutant sentiment but this can be something that's effective in any campaign like yeah any, any like Indeed. if it's anti-superhero sentiment or anti your team specific sentiment to give a situation where everybody hates the mutants, but everybody loves the Avengers that I've never understood. Right. Right. Why? Yeah. Why? I don't get it. Claude says tie the anti-mutant sentiment and, you know, fill in, fill in the whatever, whatever there mm -hmm. uh, chart to a random event table, increase the bonus to the chart yep. and put some really dangerous stuff the on the high of end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like that. Yeah. You can definitely do something like that. Yeah, I really like that idea a lot. So, would Claremont Academy and the Elysium, the Elysium Academy be rivals or nemesis? I tend to play them more as rivals, um, just because it's a little bit more fun, yeah, um, yeah. and it and doesn't get it doesn't get quite as nasty as nemesis. Um, but they're, it, and they're high school honestly, kids, yeah. you could do you could do either in your campaign. It depends on the kind yeah. of style of game you want to do. I, I find the I like the super villain school being kind of like the you know the the rival school in the sense that we want our our team to beat them you know mm -hmm. not that we hate them. Yeah, I in my mind the Elysium Academy are, is a school for super villains, but they're not full fledged super villains yet, so they sort of right. just want to prove they're the best rather than annihilating their enemies. Right. And that, that kind of offers the possibility of redeeming them or at least, you know, kind of like putting them on the right path. Yeah. And I think the kids at Claremont would want to do that. I think they would want to yeah. extend that olive branch to the Elysium kids. Yeah. You know, that, that actually, that makes a lot of sense that you're, it's really about, you know, so we had some folks kind of mention religion and that's sort of been a hot spot culturally and historically mm -hmm. for all of us, but it's ideology really, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. 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 It is systems of belief. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, big, you know, governing sort of systems of belief that clash because, you know, the the peasants aren't doing what you need them to do. Right. Let's see. Right. <laughs> Nate, Nate Robbins points out a really interesting notion that you could play with is that, you know, if, if an AI studies our fiction, basically, it will be afraid of the fact that we hate AIs, um, you know, or the fact that we're like, we always portray them as evil. Um, right. And right. so, you know, maybe the reason why, you know, an AI tries to, you know, enslave humanity is self-defense because it's afraid of us um, because we've obviously shown that we're anti-AI. Right. Um, and yeah. it might be up to the heroes to be like, no, like, we're really not. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, we're we're anti-losing our jobs, but we're not anti-AI. <laughs> right. You know. Kind of, kind of, a little anti AI, but you know, I think also there, you know, you look at, uh, I think of the Animatrix did a very interesting sort of take on, on how you know AI was just sort of like trying to be friendly and trying to be a pal. But they did mm -hmm. everything you know much better than the humans and with more efficiency. And when they went yeah. to say hello, the humans were like nuclear bomb. <laughs> and so yeah, that's uh, let's see. Warden Maximus says I want to run a public school supers game. The nemesis is the budget. Right. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Oh, it, man. Add minutia. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Hey, not all, not all you know, super-powered teenagers get to go to a fancy private school. That's true. Very true. 
Uh, the Gene says Johnny Rocket uh, has a rival who wants to be the top gay hero, but then have a father like only caring about protecting the LGBT. But Johnny wanted to help all people and equality. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yep. And, uh, the people are talking anti AI. What, what is the response to you know artificial intelligence? Like artificial stupidity. We have <laughs> so much of that already. I feel right. like. I'm not mad like, at the AI. I'm mad at the lunatics who are like, let's teach the AI to make art and not do the medial jobs. Those right. are the people I'm mad at. Yeah. I mean, I th- I'm mad at the the whole uh, bias uh, that seems to be running rampant. But, uh, you know, be mad in one hand and chat GPT in the other. And what do you get? You mm-hmm. know, a whole uh, a whole new um, a poem. <laughs> With some art. Let's see. John says, uh, the only real psychopathic Elysian students is Winter Wraith and even mm-hmm. Apex uh, being possibly redeemable. Yeah. And there's a reason why those those characters are designed that way, you know, so that, that for most of them, there's some redeeming qualities and, you know, that that possibility is there if you want to play it that way. Yeah, Warden Maximus says art with weird hands. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is true. That is true. Yeah, I think we jumped from individual nemeses to like society versus all of the heroes. I think we need to go back down a little bit to yeah, get a more like more like granular nemesis versus a team or like uh, mm-hmm. yeah, like, yeah, I think like a Doctor Doom Fantastic Four situation or Magneto yeah. yeah. X Men situation. It, it, it does. We we do tend with talking about the X Men, for example. It does touch upon the idea of a nemesis who is essentially opposed to whatever the team represents. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as far as that goes, you know, the X-Men are supposed to be, you know, representing the idea that humans and mutants can live together peacefully. And so some of their nemeses are opposed to that idea. And it really doesn't have anything to do with who the individual members of the X-Men are. It's just the thing they represent. I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh, let's see here. Ultron's a great nemesis for the Avengers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really great. Yeah. Because Ultron and, has a different relationship with a lot of the key Avengers. Right. And Ultron is another, as a great example of um, a situation where the heroes essentially created their own nemesis. <sighs> yeah. 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 I think that's, I think that's another key thing for, a hero villain nemesis relationship is the hero feels responsible for them in some way, whether it's actually creating them or it's like, if I don't stop him, this is going, this is what he's going to do. And I people will be hurt. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, I, I also like the, one of the, one of the nemeses. Well, I don't, is it, I feel like it's nemeses, but it, nemesis, but it, it might be rivalry, mm-hmm. but um, Sherlock and uh moriarty moriarty uh, just as yeah. phenomenal it, it, mm-hmm. it played a lot with intellectual sort of you know and that's it, yeah i was gonna say that relationship is definitely an example of both mm-hmm. um where they are certainly opposed their nemeses because they're working on opposite sides of the law but they are mm-hmm. also certainly rivals because they're both very brilliant minds that are you know enjoying the the game of being opposed to each other mm-hmm. yeah i really do also like the notion of that that the nemesis that storyline of the conflict and mm-hmm. they realize that they need each other that they're that mm-hmm. they're you know that the push and that pull and that they, they try to you know uh, that the one side has to make a decision and do something that that would really be more the behavior of the of their nemesis, and so they can't do that because it's evil mm-hmm. or what have you. But uh, what are yep. some other what are some other interesting sort of tropes to sort of borrow and and help inspire some? Well, I love this idea of growing out of a nemesis and like mm-hmm. what happens then that Squire brings up, where right. Mole Man isn't the rival of the Fantastic Four he used to be. Right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, what happens and if one character still feels that deep burning connection? And the other one's like, actually, I'm, be- I'm, I'm over it. This now. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. It's not you. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. The first yeah. one I oh. thought, uh, what about growing out of a nemesis? But I thought, well, wow, like a growth, like you just sort of mm-hmm. grew yeah. a, as a bud. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Pooks says, spoiler. 
Yeah, yeah I think he's talking about uh, um, Avatar. Um, yeah. And there is, there is a great growth of a nemesis example in that show, as far as that goes. Oranon says, uh, what about the trope inversion of the pathetic rival nemesis who's trying to match the heroes but is more of a nuisance? This is sure. a really great trope in storytelling in general, but especially for a role-playing game. Because yes. those are the characters that your players are going to love when they show up every time in a way that heroes and comics would not. That's absolutely true. Your play, your, your, your the heroes will hate this character, but your players will love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Drama Dork says, "I, I love when old nemeses uh, become they become friends, like on Buffy with Spike." Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. I think about um, also Charmed had that same kind of. There was a that same kind of a almost similar it to the Buffy and Spike relationship, but then also mm -hmm. there is the the two rivals trapped in a situation where they are dependent on each other to get out or to you know mm -hmm. you can you could also do that sort of temporary situation of mm -hmm. you know we're working together now, but when this is done, <laughs> we go back to being enemies. Mm -hmm. I will right, that's right, right. yeah. One of my favorite Justice League Unlimited episodes does that when Superman gets sent to the far future and has to team up with Vandal Savage on yes. a red sun planet. That's such a good story. Yes. I just love immortal villains in general because uh, they, I don't know, I love them. They amuse me. Mm -hmm. You know, I think too about Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn's had some, some engagements or relationship or connections where, mm -hmm. you know, heroes felt some sympathy or understood her at a deeper level because yep. of the, you know, mm -hmm. what she's suffered yeah. and suffers at being, you know, kind of the jokers. Yeah. Jonesy points out the classic uh, nemesis trope of your nemesis saving you because they are going to be the one to take you out. That's right. Nobody they, else gets to where they intervene. If there's another right. villain who's trying yep. to do something to you. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. You have to, you have to respect their territory, and, you know, if another villain is coming after you, nope, sorry. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, it's so cool. Yeah, it's just there's so much that you can do that's fun with Nemesis and examining how these characters get along. Like um, right now, we're still on Anti-Earth where they're actively stuck hanging out with their Nemesis, who are the heroes in this world. Mm -hmm. So like they're getting a chance to have a conversation they don't usually get to have with this villainous character to better understand who they are. Because even though they're on opposite morality sides, they still have a lot in common with the nemeses they know back home. Scrappy Doo versus Scooby Doo. Come on. <laughs> I wonder if that's a nemesis relationship. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't think so. I think. Uh, let's see. There's some great stuff. This is a great. Com I mean, you know. And again, my thanks to our thanks to Oranon for such a great topic. It is definitely. Mm -hmm. I love it when we've got the chat just sort of yeah. bursting yeah. at the seams. Who said Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> who who is that? You Jar Jar is a is a nefarious Sith Lord. Everybody knows that. Everybody right. knows it. It's uh yeah. Uh, Apu says I love when some cosmic enemy threatens the entire Earth and Doctor Doom shows up to save the day. How dare these aliens threaten mm -hmm. the sovereignty of yeah exactly Lot yep. Now exactly. they shall face Doom. There was there was just a, a um, Guardians of the Galaxy um, arc where um, the whole universe is threatened and Doctor Doom shows up to help them out because he's like I live in the universe and. How am I going to conquer it if right, it's right. destroyed? Uh, here's a quick question. So people keep spelling it scappy do. Is that just a typo? That it's just a typo. Okay, yes. good. All right. I just like, was there a scappy do that I'm missing? But uh, it just cracked me up. So let it be on the record, says Pope Brandon Brownson, that I wasn't the person who brought up Jar Jar Binks. Someone did. I know who it was. It was Nate. John Favreau and Dave Filoni this week on The Mandalorian. <laughs> hope you're already in enough trouble. So <laughs> That's right. You are. You really are. Uh, Idia Singh says one of my favorite moments with Anemeses was when we're trying to get our villains to join our side against the true, yeah, yeah, but the team leader of the good guys turns to me and asks, do you think we can change yours? Yeah. I will destroy you and your daughter. My response was just, I think that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are great moments. Scabby do is the cousin. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Scabby do. It, it is a good example, too, of a lot of times a nemesis, uh, their goal will be to win over 
the hero in some way, you know, and it will be that, you know, sort of, you know, join me and we will, you know, conquer the galaxy. Yeah. Admit I'm right. Yeah. Admit I'm right. You know, sort of that. Yeah. Yeah, Clearly I'm right. You know, you, you need to do things my way. Your talents are wasted, you know, Mm -hmm. being, you know, a superhero. How dare you maintain the status quo? Come make changes with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, right. And it gets, it gets especially persuasive when, there's something about the status quo that's not great. Um, and, you know, uh, Magneto makes a really good case, <laughs> you know, when he's saying to other mutants, um, you know, the world hates you. Why are you protecting them? Ooh, Oranon brings up another very good point. We should have had Aura on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, one <laughs> last thing of note as the chat explodes for nemeses and rivals, the dark mm-hmm. mirror, the reflection yes. of the heroes, if they went mm-hmm. down a different path, you know, interestingly enough, you could end up with a nemesis that is you from an alternate timeline. Yep. Easily in the superhero setting. All there right. Are, there are all kinds of dark mirror um, villains that either have the same powers as the character, or they share a similar origin um, you know, uh, Black Adam and Captain Marvel, yeah, um, yeah, are you know essentially the same character. Uh, Scooby Doo, Scabby Doo, different timelines, you know, time periods. Yeah. Definitely like, Scooby Doo v Scabby Doo. I like Slade and Robin because they are both sort of non-powered mm-hmm. people who are in charge of villain teams, right? But are, are super driven, teams. you know, mm-hmm. as far as that goes. I don't um, want to meet an evil Steve Kenson. I don't either. Come on. <laughs> he now. would take all of my lunch money. I it, I just don't want to know what the reams and reams of stuff that he would be producing in like writing. Right. Like it just that would be a lot of something. His uh, supervillain name would be Manifesto. That's how much his, writing. His would be. bibliography is is impressive. <laughs> Ubiquitous. <And standard>. <laughs> <laughs> bibliography is also an acceptable supervillain name. Right. I like manifesto though. That's good. Mm-hmm. I like this. The status is not quo. The world is a mess and I just need to rule it. Right. <laughs> I like um, drama dork also points out a great um, nemesis link is the characters who used to be friends. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, sure. But, you know, now their rivals are enemies because of something yeah. that split them up. Yeah. Kind of, so kind of um, a, a little bit of like Magneto and, and, and professor, professor X. X. Yeah. 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 You know, <laughs> Nate Robin mutes everyone. Yeah, I'm about. Also, I dare Jacob Blackman to call Doctor Doom, Mister Doom, to his face. Right. <laughs> that's Home one friend. way. That's a, that's a quick way to get disintegrated. Hello, <laughs> Mister Doom. Ah, <laughs> you dare? You how dare you? <laughs> Let's see. I didn't go to six months of evil doctor at school. <laughs> right. I think evil Steve Kenson would have a full goatee. Hmm. Mm. Uh, let's true. see. When will we see an actual play? Soon, yes, very we will. soon. Yeah, this month. well, I this, mean, next month in April, you will mm-hmm. actually see. Yeah, we, we won't Although get. When, one. when is um Alex's actual play? It's got it to be. We got to do it soon. Yeah, Holy right? crap! It's too. It's we only have five minutes left. That's true. <laughs> All of the scabby do talk is you know uh uh it it sort of I got time blind. Uh, let's see. Uh, Craig McNichol says I had a character named Doctor Justice, oh, whose nemesis yeah. was Alchemix, who used the, to be in his boyfriend before Alchemix turned evil. The, the your ex is your nemesis is always mm-hmm. a classic. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I'm I'm just kind of mulling over an idea here. Mm-hmm. When I look at some of the characters that we've got in chat, every once in a while, I think, wouldn't it be fun just to invite? one of them to be on the program like you know maybe we'll get one of the shans on or maybe we'll you know okay i'm thinking about it so here's Mm -hmm. the challenge for you chat my nemeses (laughs) you um a rival really maybe more so (laughs) here comes the monologue yeah, right. exactly. I can't I see it, but Troy is shaking his disembodied <laughs> fist at you. I really am. And you're all kind of dangling over a pit of uh, of hot moisture. So um, I want <laughs> you to think about, if you were to be a guest host on this program, what would you do? What would you want to talk about? What would we discuss? And... Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you, Troy. Yes. And, um, but yeah, so think about that. 
and and you know you could be disembodied you could be on camera you could uh, maybe you just remake and rethink the whole thing mm. if it's a great idea i'm i'm we're for it uh, sometimes it's even if it's a bad idea we're for it <laughs> exactly right steve i mean you know we uh we'll yeah, talk about it, anything we really will. We really will. I think, and I think we've proven that. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scabby Doo and Gravy Squatch. Like, come on. Scabby Doo. I'm just going to be thinking of Scabby Doo for the rest of my life. Thank you very much, Nate. <laughs> yes. um, so, listen, friends, it is uh, 2.56 my time. And, um, yeah, I don't know if that's legal. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll so make if it you... Legal. Yeah, exactly. If, friends, if you've got an idea, you want to, to try something experimental or fun, you want to do that, you know what? You are welcome to send a note yes. to Let's Play my, at GreenRonin.com. Speaking of my rival Jacob Blackman on to talk about superpower legends, the idea that you know we should have come up with. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I would actually love to have Jacob on. I would love right? to. I would. I would. I would also. I would love, love I would to talk love... about superpowered beastery, beastery. I love that. Also, speaking but... of ideas that we should have done first, <clears throat> but yeah, didn't. yeah, the super pets thing too. I love that. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Okay, so uh, Steve, what have you got cooking out in the world? Do you have any big stuff going on? I know you were. You had sort of a. Um, I think you did a Kickstarter. No, was I it did a friend's uh, Kickstarter or a something. Um, I was um, working on a crowdfunder with a uh, friend of mine. Didn't yeah. fund, unfortunately. So oh, shoot. We're, we're looking at some other options. Okay. Um, and uh, I did just release the um, uh, second Icons Annual, um, which is a compilation of all the stuff I did for the Icons Patreon last year. Um, that's out on Drive Through RPG for folks who are interested in checking it out. Um, otherwise, I am plugging away at secret mutants and masterminds things <gasps> um, and less secret fantasy age things <gasps> um, for the most part. SC Terran Marine says, please talk about the vigilantes handbook. Oh. Somebody said it. We've gotten so far. The vigilantes handbook is coming soon. See but now, again. yeah, now, mm -hmm. but now later because you've been mentioned it. Let's yeah. see. Um, okay, very nice. And um, I am right now, um, uh, Steve. What it was the? Uh, I'm sorry, you said it was it uh, on Drive Through RPG. Yep. What is what is the product again? Uh, it is Icons Annual Two. Uh, is its proper title? Perfect. And uh, you definitely want to check out Steve's Patreon, which you're dropping mm -hmm. in the chat. It's really easy. It's pretty simple. Yep. Patreon.com slash Steve Kenson. Um, Icons Annual 2 is the link that we're dropping in the chat um, as well over there at Drive -Thru RPG. Uh, a bargain at any price. Uh, anything else, Steve? Uh, that's pretty much it these days. Right on. Alex, how about you? You've got so much going on. I do have so much going on. I will be, um, we will be continuing our adventures in Freedom Wing Dark and the Multiverse of the Master Mage this Wednesday over at twitch.tv slash Untold Stories Project. And I launched a Kickstarter yesterday. That I'm really excited <gasps> about. For, what? Um, for my first ever comic book that I wrote with my very talented friend, uh, Stephanie Lean, who did the art for it. I'm um, so excited about this. Yeah, I'm very excited about it too. It's a fantasy, um, it's a tabletop role playing game comic book where a group mm -hmm. of heroes band together to go and try to do a heroic quest. And it's very it's cute. fun and whimsical. And right. uh, I am writing some Mutants and Masterminds material to go along with it. So I'm nice. Just doing some fantasy MM <clears throat> stuff as a. Uh, well, we've something... dropped the, we dropped the link in chat and. Um, here we're taking a look at it right now. It's cute, cute, cute. I like it. Yeah, it's chaotic good is the name of the comic book. I dig it. Yeah, well, I was like, hey, who's Thomas Lean? I'm Thomas. Lean is my friend. I, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 And um, yeah, we've got all kinds of tiers. Uh, we've got standard editions. We've got a variant cover from a talented artist. Uh, we have some chicken miniatures. That you can add on because there is a chicken who features prominently in the book. 
a chicken really? miniature. I mm-hmm. like it. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's great. So you have a cloaca level and a non-cloaca level. Very nice. Mm-hmm. So folks, you're going to want to click through and, and check that out. And, we actually do uh, have a chicken poutine and a chicken bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Which are the uh, pick it up in Canada or pick it up in Ohio. Uh, that's options. cute. I like that. Um, okay. Well, so, you know, here's the other thing. Patreon updates are coming today, later mm-hmm. this afternoon. Um, you're going to get uh, lots of good stuff there. In addition to, we're going to try it again. We're going to say, everybody sign up mm-hmm. for a date so that we can do the, um, uh, all the bowmen, bow, all the bow folk. Yes. Mm-hmm. Quiver full of bowmen. A quiver, quiver full, full of, bowmen. of bowmen. Yeah, I like that. I and got a quiver, got a quiver full of bowmen. <laughs> Frog Taco <laughs> says, uh, why didn't you lead with chicken miniature? Mm. I should have led with that. Right. You know, you're, 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 the lead. you're an author, you're a writer, uh, a creative, not a marketing person. Nope. Fair enough. That's um, Troy's job. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm a community guy. Oh, okay. okay. I'm a community mist. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of... <laughs> missed um we've missed the end of the show by two minutes that means everyone gets a free extra two minutes that you yeah so the kind of gonna, value we give you here i know really honestly we can't really take it back because once you break it you buy it it's true yeah well listen gentlemen thank you so much another wonderful monday well spent i want to thank everybody in chat you are all an absolute utter delight i also want to remind everybody make sure you're liking Make sure you're subscribing. You, you got to, you know, kind of rub yeah. up on that bell. You got to slap some stuff around. You got to share the links. You got to have the conversation and the dialogue and all that stuff is very, very important. Troy is entirely sustained by your engagement. Now, every time you ignore um, one of our videos and you do not like it, I become less substantial. Mm-hmm. I just start to become like, like a, a spread out. It's like Tinkerbell at the end of Peter Pan. Yeah, except they call me Stinkerbell. Mm-hmm. Fancy. <laughs> uh, chat no you know what we really do have a blast hanging out with you you are phenomenal folk and remember you got that idea you think you might want to come and hang out um, uh, you want to take over a show you want to have us discuss a particular thing hey maybe you've got some relationship woes or maybe you've got like some kind of a rash or you've got you know a legal concern Send in your question. We are neither doctors nor therapists uh, nor attorneys. Nor, nor do we pretend to be. No, but, but we, we will would, offer advice. Well, we have so much opinion. Even if it's this, unqualified. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy it. Make sure you're pop back here next uh, for this coming Thursday because Thursday mm-hmm. comes and we've got more, you know, we did that whole um Fantasy Age Second Edition Core Rule Book, right? And so that's kind of a big deal. So, Sean, take care. Everybody else, um, uh, you as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Thursday for Thursday, and then we'll be back Monday for more Mutants and Masterminds Monday. Uh, bye bye. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>